all four of us in the house were, were diagnosed with mild traumatic brain injury. This is kind of like, um, you know, immaculate concussion. You know, we don't know what happened. Havana Syndrome, a story of science and secrets. The government had a duty to protect our people. I can go back to the beginning. My wife and I both had severe headaches and nausea, and my oldest son was having nosebleeds that we couldn't explain. Bad, bad nosebleeds. <clears throat> and he was having, you know, three and four of them a day. It's 2017. Canadian and American diplomats living in Cuba are getting sick. Really sick. Why? It was 10 after 3 in the morning. This is a Canadian diplomat. He agrees to talk to us if we agree to keep him hidden. We're calling him Alan. This noise woke me up. It was a loud, grinding, metallic noise. Extremely loud. It went on for about 20 or 30 seconds. And then as it was dying, it went woo, 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 woo. And when it hit the low note, I thought I was gonna throw up. It just made me nauseous. And then um, at the same time, <clears throat> my son had a, uh, another major nosebleed. Q. Hi, I'm Jamie Poisson, and you're listening to Frontburner. It's a story of science and secrets. Havana Syndrome. I've been tracking every twist and turn of it for my podcast. And now I'm teaming up with the Fifth Estate and Radio Canada's Enquete to explore existing theories. And a new one, too. If you haven't heard of Havana Syndrome, here's a quick 101. It begins about three years ago. Strange sounds, almost unbearable. We're all complained of hearing a loud noise and or feeling pressure. CBC News has learned a sonic attack in Cuba last year. The mysterious syndrome makes headline news. Explanations ranged from a high-tech attack by a nefarious the government tells to New York Times the main culprit theories is fly. some kind of microwave. The weapon. FBI is now investigating whether these are Americans mass hysteria. There have been sonic wave attacks, microwave attacks. Who knows? And now that I am your president, America will expose the crimes of the Castro regime. In 2017, newly elected Donald Trump is quick to blame Cubans in what he calls attacks. They did some bad things in Cuba. The Castro regime has proved time and time again it's not a responsible actor in the community of nations. Unlike the states, historically, Canada has had a good relationship with Cuba. So why are diplomats being targeted? And why Canadian diplomats? Their families as well. My daughter and I are both now treated for post-concussion. We have balance issues. We have visual issues. Their lives turned upside down. My wife's the same. She'll pick up a phone and, and not remember why. She can't concentrate. Alan recalls a night when everything changed for him and his wife. In April of 2017, an American neighbor came over to my house. We lived directly across the road. And um, he asked me to go for a walk. I thought that was weird because we weren't that friendly. So we took a walk and he told me about this thing that was going on with the American Embassy and um, he gave me the specifics of what to look for, the symptoms. Headaches, irritability. Alan and his wife suffer from symptoms but haven't heard any sounds yet. So the next morning I took it to the ambassador. Security. 
security level secret. We get our hands on top secret emails from that time. Look at this, completely redacted. They show weeks pass before the Canadian embassy starts emailing global affairs in Ottawa. It will be helpful to identify a process we can use to rule out suspicions and thus be able to head off escalations of concerns. But embassy officials seem to downplay the seriousness. Symptoms similar to signs of extreme stress, but there's no mention of actual symptoms here. Incidents, one email says, are isolated only to U.S. diplomats. Subject line, attacks on U.S. personnel. Another, the Canadian embassy is aware that the U.S. has moved their personnel away from residences. There has been no U.S. screening of Canadians. Until Alan hears the sound himself, and he approaches his boss again. He contacted the American embassy and got the name of the doctor that was seeing them in Miami, and we were on a plane two days later. And this is where Alan's journey of tests begins. The Miami doctor he visits specializes in brain trauma. They would say that if they moved in the room, it's all at, always at their home. If they moved in the room, the noise would follow them. If they opened the front door, the noise would go away. So that's the characteristics of the noise, and it was very targeted. One of the things we used to test the individual. Michael Hoffer so gives us a demo. In, He's chair, the first to examine gone. the American victims. Alan, his wife and kids too. And this is where things get weird. Really weird. I met up with Alan's lawyer. What did the doctors find? We don't know. That we, we know that there was some um, concussion-like symptoms, but the testing was halted. Um, and we don't have an actual report from Dr. Hoffer uh, out of the University of Miami at this point. And Alan doesn't have a report on no. his own examination? No. Why? How come? You'll have to ask the Canadian government. Meanwhile, American diplomats are being evacuated from Cuba. They're also sent for tests, and more tests, this time to the University of Pennsylvania. This is kind of like, um, you know, immaculate concussion. You know, we don't know what happened. We have no experience with how you can get these concussion-like symptoms without the concussion. Some Canadian diplomats take part in the tests, but that wouldn't last long. The treatment being provided by the University of Pennsylvania was for free. No one had to pay for it. And once again, the Canadian government put a stop to that. Don't know why. Did they ever tell your clients why? Nope. And when you have that situation, when you're at world-renowned experts, where people who have similar injuries from the same place, and you're told, come home, you're not to be there, they get angry. It's clear that the Canadian diplomats and their families are sick, but there's no explanation why. The delay has had a huge impact on us in terms of the stress, trying to bring our lives back to, to normal. And so five diplomats and their families are suing the federal government for $28 million. The government had a duty to protect our people. Coming up, I'm on a trail of theories, including a homegrown one. I was willing to go where the facts lead me. But I, I have to see the facts. It's a long way from Havana to Halifax in our search for clues to a mysterious syndrome. What's making so many Canadian and American diplomats living in Cuba sick? Unfortunately, this remains a perplexing case. Their health and safety absolutely needs to be a priority. There is no question uh, that the health impacts on diplomats in Cuba have been visible and real. But it's not until late 2018 
that the Canadian government organizes its own study of the victims. It's leaked to our colleagues at Enquête. But they were very high-functioning people and they noticed that something is wrong. Researchers at Dalhousie University put the Canadian diplomats and their families under their microscope. You noticed that the diplomats had trouble remembering things. Absolutely. They complained on them, they noticed it. Blood tests, physical exams, MRIs, it's extensive. And it's the first study that measures diplomats before they live in Cuba and after they return home. They find brain injury, just like the Americans, but there's more. And there is very specific type of toxins that are affecting these kinds of nervous system, the cholinergic nervous system, and these are um, insecticides, pesticides, organophosphates. Toxins. Uh, or toxins, specific neurotoxins. And neurotoxins have a direct impact on the nervous system and brain. Why do you think that the diplomats in Cuba were exposed to these toxins? During 2016, 2017, uh, the government uh, started the Zika campaign and they fumigated all over the island, but mainly in Havana and in the cities and the urban areas, with trucks, uh, in the houses. It was an army military operation uh, in order to eradicate Zika. Why are we not hearing about Cuban people with similar uh, symptoms? Because we are not asking them, probably. And that's one reason why Canadian diplomats question the results of the study funded by the Canadian government. Paul Miller is their lawyer. The researchers at Dalhousie believe that the cause of all of these symptoms could be chemicals and pesticides, an increase in fumigation. And how do you respond to the study? How is it that you have 20 some odd Americans and 14 Canadians, maybe more Canadians, we're not sure, that these are the only people who have been affected by the pesticides. There's no other diplomats from around the world, no other civilians, but these people. Really makes you scratch your head. What are other scientists finding? Could there be some other explanation? How about mass hysteria? These bizarre and vicious attacks. It's a very unusual attack, as you know, but I do believe Cuba is responsible. If some people start thinking they're under attack because they hear strange sounds, and uh, their government says, yes, you're under attack. Uh, yes, you, 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 you have been attacked and you have to be take care. Then any symptom they have of any kind will be amplified. Mitchell Valdez Sosa is part of a team of Cuban investigators. We do know that after the, uh, there was an official communication by the U.S., a, a, a embassy to its employees and then to other embassies of the supposed attacks that the cases started skyrocketing. It's a theory massively debated, but widely dismissed. I understand you examined the brain of a family dog as well. Correct, yeah. So one of the families uh, that we interviewed, they uh, shared with us uh, the loss of the dog, mm -hmm. and during the time in Cuba, started to behave differently, started to be aggressive, uh, bark. Back in Canada, the dog's behavior worsened. The family had to euthanize it. The dog had brain changes in the brain mm. that uh, are consistent with what we found in uh, the diplomats. And, and is this one of the reasons why you think that uh, the diagnosis of mass hysteria or psychosomatic disorder doesn't stand here? I don't think the dog was hysteric, yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's throw the possibility of something more menacing into the mix. Crickets. I was willing to go where the facts lead me, but I, I have to see the facts. Cuba launches several investigations, including analyzing recordings of sounds. The annoying sounds that, that perhaps created an explanation in the minds of the patients that they were being attacked, uh, those annoying sounds can now, part of them, be explained by uh, crickets. Yes, crickets. But could it be something more sinister, like sonic attacks? We don't know 
the source. The person, you know, if they moved, the target moved with them. So that's the characteristics of the noise, and it was very targeted. Remember Michael Hoffer? He's the Miami specialist who finds brain trauma in American diplomats. We don't know that this is an attack. We know that, that there was some sort of external energy it, you know, occurring to these individuals, but we don't know how or why or what caused that external energy. <laughs> the proposal that there is an energy beam that can penetrate walls, track people around rooms. Some people will hear it, one person will hear it in a room, the other won't. Unknown to science, that's extraordinary. For scientists like Douglas Fields, the idea of sonic weapon attacks doesn't add up. That's kind of claim. Any kind of extraordinary claim requires extraordinary evidence. I've looked at the evidence. And but sonic attacks is a claim Canadian diplomats like Allen hold on to, a more plausible theory, he says, than the fumigation findings of Dalhousie's study. Like it totally ignores the fact that we heard, or I heard the noise, and my son had the nosebleed at the exact same time, and that we, all four of us in the house, were, were diagnosed with mild traumatic brain injury. Many things are not known yet. It's, it's a big research. Uh, it's just the beginning of, uh, of a research, but it's, uh, it's what we're working on now. So we got this email from a spokesperson for Global Affairs Canada. Here's an interesting line. We contact Global Affairs several times for an interview. They email us a statement saying they continue to investigate potential causes of the unusual health symptoms. For us, we're looking at how our clients have been hurt. And until they know that, uh, it's very hard to treat these people. The government had a duty to protect our people, had a duty to protect the families, and that they didn't live up to that responsibility to the way they should have. That's for the courts to decide. But for now, the search for answers to the Havana Syndrome mystery continues.